CSS shapes is one of my favorite little things that you can use to do great graphic design on the web. It's one of my favorites because the CSS is very simple, the effect is very dramatic, and the fallback for browsers that don't have support is very easy to deal with. It's kind of like a no big deal. It's funny though, I don't see nearly as many people using it as I would like to see. I have a feeling that a lot of designers just don't know that it is out there. So let me show you how this works. Here I have a example. This is a website that I built three years ago and used CSS shapes. Um, very simple code here. I've got an H1 with the name Jeremy Keith, an image of Jeremy Keith, and a paragraph about Jeremy Keith. Um, this is kind of real screenshots from the site as I was building it, about when it was like halfway built. If I float that image to the left, because it's flow content, the image is first and then the text follows. When I float that image to the left, the text sort of jumps up to be even with the top of that photo and then it flows around the photo. That's how floats work and how they continue to work, how we want to keep using them. It's also how flow content works, right? So we're familiar with this. You can kind of get the text to go around the photo. That's interesting. That's cool. We should do that more actually than we do. I also put a little bit of a margin on it on the right and the bottom to create some space between the image and the text. Looks great. If I add one line of code, shape outside circle, then rather than the flow content going in a box around the box that the image lives in, because CSS, there's always a box for everything on the web, everything under the hood. If you crack open the hood of the web browser, everything's a box. But what we can do is we can tell the browser to run that flow content in a circle and not in a box. And you get this kind of beautiful, simple effect. It has a elegance to it, or it has a polish to it that we don't see necessarily very often on the web. Uh, we do see this very much in layouts, for instance, inside magazines, where some time and attention has been put into making a good layout. Here is the finished website. This is what it looks like on the finished website. You can see basically every instance of a photo of a human is in a circle, and the bio is nearby, and the bio wraps around that circle in a circled shape. And then not every browser has support, so this is what it looks like in a browser that does not have support. The flow content just goes in a square. It goes on the outside of the box that is the image, so it's not like that's ever going to accidentally overlap anything. We basically get the effect that we would get if we were not using Shape Outside. There are a couple options with Shape Outside. You can do Shape Outside Circle, Ellipse, Border Box, Inset, URL. There's also a Shape Margin of 30 pixels, which can help, especially if you're using something like Shape Outside Border Box or Shape Outside Inset, in which case you're kind of telling the browser to follow the edge of the box. Maybe you want to adjust it. Um, here's an example showing shape outside circle again going around this photo of a tomato that happens to be a round fruit. This is an example of shape outside ellipse where instead of it being a perfect circle it's an oval and 50-50 means I want you to make it even, an even ellipse with the sort of center point of the ellipse in the 50%, 50%. but you could use different percents and make an egg or make like a lopsided egg. Here I'm using a polygon with quite a few points. Uh, that will then draw a shape around the grapes, sort of not exactly on the edge of the grapes because it doesn't need to be exact, but a kind of a complicated polygon around the grapes so that the text flows really beautifully around those grapes. Now you might ask, how in the world am I ever going to get this math for the polygon? You know, do I need to go into a program like Illustrator or what? No. What you're going to want to do is use a tool in a developer inspector and get at those numbers. Just manipulate the shape directly in the browser, grab the numbers out of the dev tools and paste it into your code. So here is a dev tools that was made by the folks at Adobe quite a few years ago. Uh, it's a Chrome extension that I think you can still get today, although I know it's maybe, it, it seems to be getting an increasing number of bugs. Um, Adobe's not able to continue to work on this anymore, so, uh, I'm not sure how well this works at the moment, but we are making this kind of tool for Firefox right now. In fact, as I record this video, I think it's almost done and I'm hoping to actually be, get my hands on it soon and be able to show the, the, the Firefox version to you. But in any case, 
this tool in this Chrome extension shows you the idea of CSS shapes. It shows you the idea of having a polygon and how by adjusting the polygon points, you can adjust how the flow content is wrapping around that image. Really powerful. This is what CSS shapes does for us. It, it really works in many ways like a program, like uh, PageMaker, Quark Express, um, InDesign, and letting the page layout have the text wrap around some kind of an image. Here's another example. This one was also put together by the folks at Adobe, where you can see that rather than having a polygon or some other sort of shape that has to be created manually, the flow is being controlled by a mask. There's an image that is the image of this beehive, and then there's a mask image, and the mask is telling the browser where to put words and where to not put words. This is probably a much more appropriate solution to a situation like a content management system where you could have a bunch of robots create the masks for you automatically based on the content images and you wouldn't need somebody to kind of bespoke handcraft each shape. I'll dig in. You can see that the beehive with the illustration of the bees is actually a content image. It's in the HTML itself where the mask it says shape outside URL, and it's pointing to a different image. It's a PNG. You can see it here, where it's just black and white. Now, these images have to be cores compatible, which has to do with this security thing. Um, there are times, I know people try to do this, especially just even on your local computer, and there's something about the image and the way the image is saved that's not cores compatible, and so it doesn't work. The mask just doesn't appear. Uh, if you're struggling with that, then go look up cores, capital C-O-R-S, and kind of find out about cores compatibility. It has to do with making sure that once a website is launched, that somebody can't uh, kind of attack the server by changing the image and doing something with redirecting what image is getting used on that particular uh, mask for that particular CSS shape. Kind of goes above my head because I'm not really that deep into servers or into security, but uh, it has to be course compatible, unfortunately, and that makes it kind of hard to use. But once you kind of wrangle with the server side stuff and figure out what you need to be doing, um, the CSS parts are really quite simple. Here's a design that I really like from a magazine where the text is in this polygon shape and there's a graphic match between the staircase and the text, and it just makes for a very beautiful, very polished kind of presentation. We could do something like this with CSS shape outside by creating triangles in that white space and letting the content flow in between, and maybe if it overflowed, then it could just start flowing into a typical normal column. All kinds of possibilities are true with CSS shapes. You don't just have to go around an image. You don't just have to go around something that's on the page. You can also kind of delineate white space and shape the content in the way that your text is flowing. So check out CSS shapes, mess around with it, try it. Maybe if there's someone on your team that you think could learn from it, maybe you're a developer and you want to inspire your designers, perhaps make some examples based on the content that's on your website, like a few prototypes or something. and Just show them to people to get the word out that this is a possibility and something that we really could be using to make our websites more beautiful and more professional.